Jake Ludington here at HP Discover in Frankfurt, Germany, and I'm here with Bruno Herring, and we're going to talk about software-defined networking. What exactly is that? Well, software networking is more an architecture point of view. But what I'd like to, to cover with you today is to start on the overall vision we have for the network. Because um, before talking about the actual technology implementation and solutions, we want to articulate how we see the network and what will be the behavior and on, on, on characteristic we want to provide. So what you have to acknowledge is the fact that the networking is now in a breaking point. Um, we are facing major challenge when you want to operate network. You have to uh, uh, cope with a diversity of users, a uh, lot of fragmented uh, parameters in terms of security. Uh, you have also now applications that are not only in your data center but in the cloud. So all of this is putting a lot of complexity and risk on the networking. Because if you think about it, today networking has more of a stone edge in terms of uh, management. Yep. We are still you know, doing CLI commands every time you want to deploy a new user or you want to bring your own device or you want to deploy your new applications at the end of the day you have to have some manual CLI commands that need to be operated into the network and so this is basically not sustainable and so what we as HP we now articulate a vision on how we see the network in the future how it will adapt to this change in the, in the enterprise and so the first thing we basically we want is to really run an infrastructure that is very open so based, and that has been true forever. We are based on open standards and we, if it doesn't exist, we are driving open standards. We want the infrastructure to be also very scalable. We want the infrastructure to be agile. We want the, the infrastructure to be secure and we want to be it's very consistent. And that's what we call the flex network architecture. So it's the fundamental attributes and values that everything we are doing, uh, uh, basically in terms of routing, switching, uh, wireless, security, this is all the attributes we are relying on. But then, what we want is to uh, stick more to the business. So one of the key attributes we are working on is to make the, um, the, the network a bit more application or user aware. So this is what we call application characterization of the network. So you want the network to understand, finally, what are the application is, is transporting? What are the user connecting to the network? Because today it doesn't care. Doesn't, today it's just get some attributes, which is VLAN, or QoS, or rate limiting, but it doesn't feel what is the application. So that's one thing we are, we are investing. The second thing is we want to get some kind of abstraction layer in the network to be much more agile. So that's exactly where SDN will play. And I will ask my colleague Dave to, to cover these topics on the SDN architecture. So we want to create these abstractions to be much more agile, much more so multi-tenant, much more secure at the end of the day. Uh, and last but not least, because what we want to achieve is what we call the automation of your orchestration. So, because as we want to have this network much more reactive to the change in the business, we want to basically be able to operate the network in really an orchestration level or automation level. You deploy your new application, being you service not only your server, your storage, but your networking. You have a new user connected to the network on a new device, being you provision the right services or the right security to it. And you don't have any more to go through these CLI scripts. That's really the essence of what you see as what we call the virtual application network vision. And how does OpenFlow play into this? Because that's kind of a key piece, right? Yeah. So, and, I, and here I will ask uh, Dev to help me here. But the point, OpenFlow is a fundamental API part of the SDN architecture. So shall I invite Dave to... to sure, let's, let's grab Dave. Yeah. All right, so Dave, I have you here now uh, to, to uh, clarify for Bruno, what is OpenFlow and how, do, how does it work in the context of the uh, software-defined networking? Okay, so OpenFlow is the pivotal protocol that allows us to provide the network abstraction. So what that actually means is we can separate away the control layer of the network, so the part that does all of the, the computations for things like uh, path computation, applying policies, we can separate all that out and place it in a centralized node. So what that does is it gives you this single abstract view of the network. And where that really plays from an automation perspective is you have a single interface to interact with the network. So now what that means is you can start to be more specific about applying your business policy to the way that you want your network to operate. So you can say, for example, if you were a retailer, uh, payments are obviously very important to your business. You can tell your network just exactly that. You know, Payments are the most important thing on my network. Please make sure that they get this level of service. And you can use OpenFlow to then dynamically enforce that policy across your entire estate. 
So you don't need to, in the legacy network, go on to 250 devices, configure each of those, creating an hour each, you know, susceptible to human error, you apply the policy once, and you go and let the, the SDN controller go and do the work for you. And where does the SDN controller kind of meet up with the, the traffic that's flowing? Is this, uh, this is a device on the network, or is it sitting like right at the port level? So this is where the, the data plane portion comes in. Uh, all of the forwarding done in hardware, but it's the open flow rules that dictate exactly how that's, uh, that's handled. And the push of these rules to the device is handled by the controller. So the controller takes your policy, converts that into an open flow rule set, and pushes that rule set down to the devices. Now what about, so, so you're talking about giving priority to devices, can you uh, devalue the priority of certain Absolutely. kinds of traffic? Absolutely, so the great thing about OpenFlow is that it is so flexible, so you can do whatever you like. I mean, you can do different things in path computation, so taking the same example about uh, the, the payment traffic, you can say, if the traffic type is payment traffic, please always take the shortest path. However, if the traffic is web traffic, people surfing Facebook, for example, make sure that it takes the longest path possible so they get the worst page response time. <laughs> like, I suppose if uh, Facebook starts to seem horrible in the network experience, maybe you'll use it less. Or, but can that backfire and have, it, have people just spend more time because they're waiting for the page well, to load? you never know. <laughs> All right, so I think there's like one specific use case that you guys are talking about here called Sentinel. Yeah, that, that is a proof of concept for kind of really uh, doing interesting things with the, the software-defined networking. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. So what we're doing is uh, essentially using SDN to provide a level of security. So we have quite a company called Tipping Point, and Tipping Point uh, have very kindly put together something called a reputation database. Now what this does is it collects information about websites which are decidedly dodgy, to be honest. Uh, botnets, malware, any site that is uh, essentially a bad site will be given a score. And that score is uh, a level of risk. And you can tell Sentinel, our security application, what level of risk of going out to the web is acceptable for you. And it uses SDN to then dynamically enforce this. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say for uh, a customer wants to go out to a website, we'll use Facebook, we've just used them. <laughs> so they, they try to go out to facebook.com, what happens is a DNS request goes out. In our Sentinel application, the DNS request gets forwarded over to the controller, we inspect the URL, compare it to our cloud-hosted reputation database, and if it's good, acceptable level of risk, then it's okay, we'll let that resolve, let them go to the website. If it's not acceptable, then we block it straight away. The switch actually drops the packet before it propagates into your network. So you don't add stress on your DNS servers, you don't have your proxy server going out to the website. It's actually blocked at the very source. That's a, that's a quick and easy uh, way to get rid of a lot of bad traffic that does show up on networks. Absolutely. So not only can we do it on, based on the reputation, but you can also whitelist and blacklist specific websites as well. So, and so, so with the with the HP technologies and the, the software-defined networking, um, I understand that there are, are APIs that people can implement their own solutions. So Sentinel is just an, a, is a kind of a, a reference for what could be done, it is. but people can kind of develop their own things? Yeah, totally. So that's really the power of SDN. We provide you with an open API into our controller, which allows you to dictate the behavior of your network. So you know, all, it, it's very simple. We you can develop the application to do whatever you want. So it could be the path computation example we spoke of. You, know, you, you can do something along those lines. Any sort of custom application, you know, essentially it's the best way of applying your, your static old legacy network, you know, wasn't very good at reacting the way that your business wants it to. Now with SDN, it gives you the power to actually define the way the network to operate the way that your business needs it to. So it makes you so much more agile.